All right, guys, Tyler down here at Emerald City Guitars uh, with our next little installment uh, of this restoration that we're doing with this Gretsch here. Uh, if you missed last week, basically what we did was go through the entire guitar and determine exactly what needed to be done. Um, and it was a pretty big list of things. Um, if you didn't see it, you probably want to go back and watch that video just for reference. But uh, I've been spending this last week kind of mulling over what I think my course of action should be on this. Um, as far as order of operations and I've kind of come to the conclusion that the really really big issues on this guitar uh, stem from the fact that this neck angle is just totally wonky so I think what I'm going to do first is pull this neck uh, one just to make sure that it can be pulled um, like I said last week I'm pretty sure this is uh, like tight bond wood glue that's holding it on um, but who knows what else is inside that dovetail uh, if it's something that just can't be removed then our kind of plan of action is going to be really really different um, so I think I'm going to get that off and then once we see exactly what we're dealing with uh, we can go from there yeah so let's just change up this camera angle a little bit and uh, we can get to it all right so before we get to pulling this neck I'm just going to pull off a couple of these pieces uh, that might get in the way once we start getting in there with the heat All right, so we got everything out of the way. Let's take a quicker look at this joint. Um, as you can see, it's very, very messy. Um, as far as I know, it's type on. So I'm actually gonna start with dry heat uh, rather than going straight to steam. Um, I like this method more on type on just because I find if you get too much moisture in a type on, it gets almost like slimy and rubbery. Um, and it's really, really difficult to pull that dovetail. Um, for things like hide glue, you absolutely need moisture and it's not gonna happen without it. Uh, but for this, I think I'm gonna start with some dry heat and um, just get going with the spatula around these joints and, and see where that takes us. First things first, I'm gonna pop this heel cap off, um, see if there was any work under there already. Oh yeah, wow, never that easy. Okay, geez Louise. All kinds of garbage down there. You can kind of see too, I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera, but you can see there's some little thread marks there on the, uh, on the heel cap. It kind of corresponded with a mystery dot kind of in the side of the binding there where somebody might've driven a nail or a screw or something. Um, so yeah, there's definitely more at hand. Um, in the course of pulling this neck, I'm sure this little piece is going to come off. Um, it usually does. I don't know why this one would be the exception. Um, but geez, yeah. Also, let's get this bolt out before we forget about that. Let's see. not even sure what this is. It's kind of chalky. Yeah, I'm just going to drill it out. All right, keep this in frame. Uh -oh. Okay, I already hit the head of something. That's probably not good. Looks like a big flathead, maybe. Yeah, 
Mm. Let's see if we can't just back that out and see if it'll drag all this crap with it. All right, this angle is a little bit too difficult to get everything in frame. I'm gonna move it back a little bit and keep going on this. All right, that's a little bit better. So yeah, this thing is just not wanting to come out. All the way around the edge here. It's right about to strip. Jeez, what is holding that on? Oh man, sorry I cut you guys off there. I had to take some pretty extreme measures. I don't know the last time I saw a fastener that freaking recalcitrant. After about yeah, an hour or so of just doing the same thing, sweating, cussing in French, I actually got the soldering iron out and heated the head of that fastener until I was able to get that loose. But it took a quite a bit of heat and, and a lot of time as well. But it is finally backing out. So now we're back in business. My God. Hope every part of this restoration isn't that difficult, but we're turning. Mm. Still not easy, mind you. I don't know what's in there. Hopefully it's not epoxy. It probably will be. But, oh. <laughs> Thank God. Terrible. All right. Cool. So that's out of there. Let's see if we can work the spatula under this extension a little bit and see, uh, get away without using a bunch of heat. 
and the squeeze out goes all the way under right near the pickup. It's just every, ooh, wow. I feel pretty good. <laughs> okay, a little headway there. Oh man. Oh sure. Yeah, that's still tight on. Yeah, that's a lucky break. It's about time. Uh, oh yeah, this is letting go really nice. <laughs> Nothing else horrible will happen today. Yeah. Oh man, that whole heel is still hot. Jeez Louise. Now from just the feel through the spatula, I'm pretty confident I'm not diving into the top. Um, it's pretty crystalline and kind of crackly, which is what you expect to feel when you're running into dried glue. So, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, excellent. Hmm. Now to get heat into this joint, we can do one of two things. Um, we can either go through the top, the fretboard, it's a pretty conventional way of doing neck resets, or because the heel cap is already off and we're gonna replace it, we could go through the heel where usually that's the source of most of the trouble where it's gonna wanna stick. So, I know, I think I'm gonna go through the heel. Um, especially because, like I said, so much junk and dried glue right back here under the heel. Um, that's where I want most of the heat. So I think I'm just gonna go straight down through there and then fill that later on. Also find out in the process of all of this that um, there is no fastener in that little mystery hole anymore. Um, looks like it was drilled and then taken out. So that's, uh, that's good, I guess, but excellent. You go a little off center, just kind of follow it back that way. Maybe try to find one of the uh... rather than try to find the air pocket. Yeah. Granted, with dry heat, we don't really need to find any air pocket. Uh, we're just putting basically a hot stick down in this hole, which can radiate through, you know, not air. Um, just go wood to wood. So it's not totally necessary that we hit that, but still would help. Let's do here. It's going to be good enough. So not too far past the threads. backwards a little bit so you don't tear too much out. <laughs> Haven't hit metal yet, that's a good sign. something that is not burning wood. That'll be fun. Hmm. Okay. Hit something. Uh, end of a string you can stick down and kind of get a better feel for where you are and go a little bit further. Yeah, we're right 
that in there. Alright, so to actually apply this heat, we're going to use a little contrivance called the heat stick. Um, it's commercially available through Stumac. But it's actually the idea of our friend Ian Davlin, absolute ace repair guy uh, back in New Jersey. And the idea was to have uh, an implement uh, where you basically don't need steam um, to induce heat into a joint. And this is pretty much the perfect instance for something like that. Um, it just attaches right to the end of your soldering iron. Um, sometimes you'll have a little difficulty getting heat to the very, very tip, uh, but for the most part, it's a really, really useful tool, and I think it's perfect for this. So we're going to use it. I typically set my iron to around 770 for procedures like this, Fahrenheit degrees that is. Um, but this is <laughs> it's going to be another very exciting piece of YouTubery. We just got to sit and wait. So uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to time lapse most of this, but yeah, just kind of stay diligent, feel the outside of the heel, make sure the finish isn't going to overheat. Um, there's not much to do otherwise. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes of uh, whopping that heat in there. I'm just kind of going around the perimeter with the old spatula and spatularette. Um, and it's starting to come loose a little bit. You can see it's pulling at the heel and a little bit on the side to the side. Um, the fretboard extension basically came all the way loose with virtually no heat, just with uh, working the spatula under there. So yeah, I think we're getting there. Not too hot on the outside, so I feel good about the finish, but yeah, definitely some movement, so. All right, so we're getting real close here. I'm gonna pull the heat off. And it's hot, get this upside down. I'm just gonna kind of clamp the neck tightly into the vise, then I can wiggle this body, get it loose, hopefully off. See how much play there is in that body there. Oh yeah, we're kind of, yeah. Sounds like a cow chewing its cud. Oh yeah, okay, we're in business. about right. See that all bumping around. Oh Lord. Let's see what happened there. The scene is similar, yeah. Um there's glue everywhere, including the cheeks. But all in all, honestly not as bad as I thought. Let's just look at that. Jeez. If any aspiring luthiers are watching at home, uh, this is something that would be considered too much glue um, and in all the wrong places, no less. So the dovetail still is intact though. Um, nothing came apart, nothing caught fire. What is that? It looks like chocolate mousse. Kind of good. It seems to all be kind of dried up. I don't I don't know if it is tight bond. It looks beige and vaguely delicious, but it's really not uh, workable at all right now. Lots of times with high glue, right when you get the neck off is a great time to clean off all the excess glue um, because it's nice and, and pliant, but this is not the case. It's completely just sludgy and looks like toffee, but uh, in any case, wow, that could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> oh, that should be on my business card. Could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, other than the really bad touch up along uh, along these edges, which we you know knew about prior, 
really not too much going on here. So fingerboard stayed glued down and wow, <laughs> very pleasantly surprised at this. Um, so yeah. All right, guys, so this probably isn't the longest video ever, probably not as long as last week's, uh, but this neck pull took uh, about three and a half hours. So I'm running low on battery, uh, both in my camera and internally. Um, so I'm gonna call it for this week. Um, but thanks for tuning in next week. I think we might deal with a couple of the cracks, um, clean up this dovetail. I might do that off camera just cause it's really boring and gross. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week.